Hey everyone, welcome back to InfoGamer. Now for this video we have something really cool planned. As you guys know, we've put out two Let's Play Pokemon Go videos, which were really fun to do. We enjoyed walking around, catching Pokemon, and trying out the new Pokemon Go. But what we thought would be really fun to do for this video is to show you guys how Nintendo and Niantic, the company that made Pokemon Go, probably went about creating their augmented reality game mechanic for Pokemon Go. So augmented reality or AR is something where you take a picture or a video of something in the real world from like a phone or a webcam and then you take that video and you overlay other game things like game models or UIs on top of the real world picture that your phone is displaying. And so AR is a way of combining virtual gameplay and real world video together into one game. And so Pokemon does this really well. We'll show you a little picture right now. We took this picture while we were playing Pokemon Go. And this shows me in the background and we're trying to catch a Pokemon. And so that's the combination that we're talking about. The video of me in the background and then this 3D modeled Pokemon is being overlapped on top of the video. So a really cool thing about Pokemon Go is that it was actually made using Unity. Every time you start it up, it'll say powered by Unity. And so that's the way we know that this game was created using Unity. And so we're gonna show you how we would go about creating the AR element of the Pokemon Go app. So here's a little demo of what we're gonna teach you, how to get your webcam into Unity. So if I go ahead and hit play, and right now I have it set to maximize on play, so it's gonna pop up really big, and you'll see my webcam. So. Hey everyone, it's Nate, and so this is what we're going to show you how to get, how to get your webcam working in Unity. And so this will work for mobile phones, it'll work for when you have your front facing camera, the one that faces towards you when you're looking at the screen, and your back facing camera, one that points out to things that you want to take a picture of, or something like that. So let's go ahead and I'll hit play and I'll go away and we'll show you how this was made. So I have the script right here, but let's go ahead and write a new script from beginning to end. That way you guys can see step by step how to write this script. So I'm going to create a new script and let's call it AR script. for augmented reality. And let's open that in Visual Studios. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is create a couple variables. So the first one is going to be a private stream and we're going to call it device, de device name. Now we need a private and it's a webcam texture and we'll call it WCT for webcam texture. Next we'll create a private webcam device and we'll make it an array and then we'll call it devices. devices. Now we need two public variables. So the first one is gonna be a public int and it's going to be called device number. And our third one is going to be a public and then renderer, renderer, and we'll call this AR renderer. Next we're going to create a new function and we're going to call it play AR. And if you wanted to call this function when you click a button, then you could actually make this a public function. So let's go ahead and do that. Public. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to assign our devices array. 
And to do that, we are going to say webcam textures dot devices. So this gets all the camera devices of the current device that we're using. And so if we're using a cell phone and it's got two cameras, one on the front and one on the back, then it's going to store two devices in our devices array. So the first one is going to be the back facing camera, like the one that you would take pictures of other people with. And then the second one is going to be the selfie camera. Now what we need to do is assign our device name variable. So I'm going to call our device name variable and I'm going to set it equal to whichever device we want to choose. So I'm going to use our devices array and inside I'm, our brackets I'm going to call our device number variable. And so in the inspector when we put this script on our plane that we want to use for our AR, we are going to assign a 0 or a 1. 0 if we want the back facing camera and a 1 if we want the front facing camera. And so let's say semicolon right there and we actually need dot name because we need to get the name of that device and put it in our device name variable. Next we need to assign our webcam texture variable and so to do this we want to call new and then webcam texture and in parentheses we then call our device name because it's looking for a string for the device name that we want to use. So here I've gotten it to pull up the other three parameters that we need to create a new webcam texture. And so we can now put in the pixels for the width of our image. This is going to be the resolution and width. And so I'm going to say 600. And for the height, let's also say 600. And then for the frame rate, let's say 30. We want to get 30 frames per second. And I typed device number, not device name. So there we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to apply our webcam texture to our AR renderer variable. So we'll type AR renderer dot material dot main texture and we'll set that equal to WCT and then semicolon. Now all we need to do is play our WTC texture. And so this is what activates it capturing. So not until, so we've assigned everything, so everything is connected. Now, once we type wtc.play, this is when it starts playing and capturing the image from our camera device. And we need to have parentheses because the play is a function, a member function. And that is everything that we need to start our AR or augmented reality capturing for our game. Now the last thing that we need to do before we can test this is to make sure that our WTC will stop playing whenever we need it to. And so the best way to do this is to create a public function. So we'll type public void and we'll say stop AR and inside this all we need to type is wtc.stop and it's a member function so we'll put parentheses and then a semicolon the last two things that we need to do is call this function on the on disable so we'll type void on disable and then inside the on disable function we'll call our stop ar function and on our start function, we'll actually end up calling our play function just for testing purposes. You might want your AR to start at a different time. You might not want it to start in the start function. And so you could call the play function somewhere else in your code, or you could use a button 
to activate your augmented reality. And so we're just going to use the start function. So we'll type play AR and then our parentheses and a semicolon. Let's go ahead and save this and go back to Unity and then make sure it's all working. So once you're back in Unity, I have the plane from our demo. And the reason why we need a plane is because the webcam texture isn't like a sprite or something like that where it just works automatically. We need a plane or an object that we can cast our texture onto. We can apply our texture and then it'll appear. And so the easiest way to do that is to use a plane. And so I created this plane by going create 3D object plane and you'll need to rotate it. And so the rotation that I have for a webcam is 90, 90 to 70 when your camera is facing in the positive direction. And then I made sure that it was scaled to fit my screen. So I will select my second plane. I'll change it to 90, 90 to 70. And then you'll see, first of all, it's not center. So let's center it. And then I'll need to scale up my plane because it's smaller. And to prove that, I will move. I'll actually just disable my other plane. So right now you can see that there's on the top and the bottom of my plane, it doesn't fit in this vertical view or portrait view of my camera. So to do this, we're going to scale up the X and the Z, or you could actually just use the scale tool. Let's see, select this and scale it up until it just barely fits inside the camera. And now we need to apply our new script. So we'll grab our AR script and just drag it right onto our plane. And you can see it's here in the inspector and we need to apply our AR renderer. And so we can do this by clicking on our plane in the hierarchy and drag it into that field. Another way that you could do this is in your code, you could use the get component and I'll actually go ahead and do that right now. So here we have our code and on start, I want to say, AR renderer equals get component and then in carrots I'm going to type renderer and then parentheses and a semicolon and now I can actually make this private because it'll automatically do it and so we don't even need to see it in the inspector. So that's going to disappear and now all we have is for our public variables is our device number which is an int. And so zero is what we're going to need to use for a webcam. But if you had a phone and it had two cameras, one that's facing you when you're looking at the screen and one that's facing the opposite direction, you'll need to change it to one if you want the camera that's facing you and zero if you want the normal camera that you use to take like pictures of other people or pictures of you know, scenery and stuff like that. It also might actually depend on the particular device that you have, but for the most part, that should be the standard. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how it works. One more time. And there you go, it's working. So we hope you enjoyed this video. One last word of advice though, webcams and the cameras on phones are oriented, oriented differently. And so your webcam might have one rotation and your mobile phone might have another rotation for its camera. And so to fix this, you're going to need to really just test it out, try it, try it out and build the game for a mobile device. And if it's, if the rotation isn't right, then rotate the plane itself. You'll grab the plane and rotate it. However, whichever way you need to rotate it in order to get it upright. And so if you're holding your phone portrait view, then it's also going to have a different rotation than if you're holding it 
landscape view. And so keep that in mind. Now, make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends. And we'll see you next time.